Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in this video we're going to look at Microsoft Copilot Studio plugin actions. And this is a continuation of my Microsoft Copilot Studio series and I highly recommend you also go watch the introduction video. All right, so in this video, we're going to deep dive into plugin actions and plugin actions is at a copilot level inside the copilot studio. And I'll walk you how to create a plugin and then call that plugin inside a topic. And you'll quickly realize how many nodes this is going to save you and make the overall creation of the copilot so much more easier. And if you're coming from the power virtual agent side, it's very important that you watch this video because you literally have to rethink how to go ahead and now build these co-pilots because now using these plugins, you may not have to call Power Automate as much. So it's very important that you also watch this video. But first, here's my intro video. So let's do a quick recap of what I covered in the introduction video. And when it comes to these plugins, there's actually two kinds. There's the conversational plugin and the plugin actions. Plugin actions is what we're covering in this video. And following are the key points of the plugin actions that you need to be aware of. Important one being that it can only be built at a co-pilot level and not at the high scale studio level. So now that you have a good overview of what plugin actions are, let's go and actually build one. So to make this learning a little fun, I dug up a video I built six years ago and now we're going to rebuild it inside Copilot Studio. So six years ago, I actually went and built this Lego inventory app, which was a combination of Power Apps Canvas app, Power Automate, and I had to build my custom connection to this third party called Rebrickable API. And it worked really well. But now we can do this so much more easier and have some good human interaction in Copilot Studio. So first things first is that this Rebrickable API, well, we've now directly got a connector for that. And it is an independent published connector by none other than Troy Taylor. And Troy is a 100% legitimate guy. I had the pleasure of hanging out with him at the MVP Summit of 2024. An amazing guy, really sharp. And thanks to him, we now have this connector directly. So I don't even have to go ahead and do my own custom connector. And if you're interested, here is Troy's LinkedIn profile. Feel free to connect with him. Now, if you're not familiar with what this Rebrickable is, let me give you a quick overview. This is a third party site, which actually has a pretty robust database of all the Lego parts. And they are built in different categories. It's sets, parts, and all of them have subcategories. But the neat thing that they've done is actually provided an API for that. So in my case, I've gone ahead, I've created an account. All of that is completely free. And if I go and take a look at my account settings, you will actually see that there is an API. When I click on the API, you can go ahead and generate an API key. This is what I did. And now you need that key to actually go and create that connection. So first, go ahead and do this, grab this API key, and now let's go and create that connection. So I'm in my Power Automate site. You can be in Power App site as well. It doesn't matter. Just make sure that the environment that you are in is in the exact same one as where you're going to go and build that co-pilot. So I'm going to go back into my Power Automate. I'll click on more and I'll go ahead and create my connection. So in my connection, I'm going to make sure that it completely loads and I'll click on create a connection. Let me X out of this one. On the top right, search for Rebrickable. And there you go. It shows up. Go and click on plus. And right over here, this is the important part. You see how it says in the form key API key, which means that you need to first type in that letter key, which is K-E-Y, and I'll show you that I actually typed that in, K-E-Y, put in a space, and now paste your actual key. This is the key that we just picked up from Rebrickable. So remember, you gotta put in that K-E-Y letter. It actually tells you, type in K-E-Y, put in a space, then paste your key and after that you can go and click on accept and create and this is how it actually goes and creates that connection this is the first step that we have to do and you can do that in power apps and power automate site it doesn't matter make sure that you're in the correct environment and second check your data policy so i'll come into as my power platform admin center also called as ppac making sure that i'm in the data policies this is the only policy that i have so i'm going to select it click on the edit policy uh, let's go and click on next, go to my businesses site, and over here, I'll just check to see, hey, is my rebrickable already allowed? 
Yes, it is allowed, which is in the business side. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that it was actually blocked. So I have it. I'm all set to use this connector. Now we can start having fun in Copilot Studio. So I'm in the home screen of my Copilot Studio, making sure I'm in the correct environment where I have that connector. And now we've got to actually go ahead and do the plugin actions inside a Copilot level. So you can't do it at the high level. It has to be inside the Copilot level. So I've already gone ahead and created a Copilot. It's called Copilot for Bricks. Bricks basically stands for that Lego bricks, all right? So I'll click on it. And once I'm inside it, get past the introduction section over here. I'll go and click on next, next, and we're all done. Here is where I got to click on the left side. It is topics and plugins. So I'll click on plugins and over here on the top, it says plus create. There is a drop down and here you can actually go and select plugin action. So I'm going to click on the plugin action and over here, first thing that comes up is it says, what action do you want to add? And right there, you can actually go and search for what it is. In our case, it is rebrickable, rebrickable. So I'll just type that in, hit enter and it's going to go and do a search. And these are all the actions that I can go ahead and use. So the two that I want to test with is gets a part details and set details. So I'm just going to go and say rebrickable parts. Let's see if that comes up. So it is going out and filtering off a little bit, but actually go down and search for a little bit. And this is going to be get part details. That's the one that I want. So when I click on it, it is going to the next section. And now I have to go and finish the remaining connection details. So let's wait for this to load. So we are good. It's saying that we've got a valid connection and we saved ourselves that step by actually going and creating the correct connection before the step that we just did. Now I'll go and click on next. And this is where we go and finish off the configuration piece. So the connection is good as is I'm not going to do anything else. Now in the action sections and in the action details is just giving us an overview. I don't have anything else to do over here. What I need to focus on is the inputs and the outputs. And it's pretty awesome when you do this as a plugin action because both of those are automatically done inside that one node. So in the input section, if I go and click on it, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it to the default one, which is dynamically filled with the best options. And I'm going to take the user's entire response for that. So I'll leave it at that one. So I'll go back now in the outputs, it shows it as zero, but it actually is giving us an output. And just to be sure, let's go into the edit and it selected the respond to the user after running this action. And I'm going to leave the default. This is AI dynamically generates a message and it's the default one. So I like what this is. I'll go ahead and make sure I click on the back. Just make sure double checking everything is good. And I'll go and click on finish. So now it is processing my request and it's going ahead and creating my plugin action. And once this is done, we'll actually see our plugin action show up. There you go. Now it says plugin action is one. Click on it and voila, that is our rebrickable plugin action to get part details. Let's go and create a second one just to make sure that we've understood this and we'll also change the action a little bit. So I'm going to click on the plus create over here, drop down, click on the plugin action. And this time I'm going to say rebrickable set details. All right. The first one was parts detail. This is going to be the set details. Uh, so I need to go and do a search down over here. Keep going, keep going. We are gone past, which is good right there. Get set details, click on it. And it's going to go ahead and make a connection to it. Once it finishes the connection right over here, I like the green check and it says valid connection. Now we go and click on next. After that, that is the action. Just confirm it, get set details. We want to do that on the action side. Everything looks good. Inputs will always be one, but let's go and double check in the inputs. It's actually going to take the user's entire response. It will be of type set number, which is great. Let's go back again and now scroll down to the outputs. Once again, the output shows zero, but it actually is there because we've gone ahead and done the check by default. It says respond to the user after running this action and go ahead and see this message as an AI dynamically generated message. So I'm good over here. Go back, scroll all the way down, finish. Now it is processing a request and now we should also see a second plugin action. There you go. Already done. And I like that it's actually going a little faster. So we've got our two plugin actions, which is good to go. Now let's go and create some topics to leverage these plugin actions. So I'm going to go and create two topics. One will be specifically for the parts and the other one will be specifically for the sets. 
Now, don't misunderstand by thinking that, oh, because I got two plugin actions, I have to create two topics. No, that is not the case. This is what I do, because especially when I'm building these co-pilots, I like to compartmentalize these topics differently. That way I can actually make this grow, make this perform a little better, and make sure that it doesn't organically grow, so that in the future when I come in, troubleshooting or even enhancing it will become difficult. Breaking it down into multiple topics actually makes it a little bit more easier. So for that sake, I'm gonna click on plus create, click on topic, and let's go and leverage Copilot to actually build this one. So I'll click on the Copilot, and the description, I'm gonna put this in. Let user get information about Lego using part number. So I'm gonna go and click on create now, and let's see how Copilot performs. So it went ahead and got us directly into the studio. Great, it gave that same name that we, uh, we gave. And then right now the trigger's already set up, question is put in, the information we get from the uh, user, which is the user response is saved to a variable, and then it gave me a message. So it at least did about a good 30% and actually helped me save some time in putting these nodes over here. On the triggers, I like that it went and put in at least everything that I could think of. So if I click on edit, I have that get Lego part number or find Lego part number. So I'm really happy with all these phrases and the triggers that it put in. Um, on the question, specifically for the variable, I do wanna go and put in this var prefix. Now this is my own personal practice. Uh, if anything is gonna be available, I put in a var either as a pre or a post fix, uh, something that I've been following for years. And so everything over here is good, the message is good. So now let's go ahead and add our plugin. So inside the call and action, if I go to plugin, right over there is the one for the get part details. And that's the one that we need for this topic, which is get Lego part number. So I'm gonna click on the Lego part details, this new node comes up, and it's pretty awesome because this is all the outputs that it can go ahead and get directly if you go and provide that part number. But for the input, we need a little bit of help. So I'm gonna click on the plus select value, select that part number, and then what is the value that we have to provide? So I'll go and click on that, and that is the var number that the user actually provides right over there, and it's saved on that side. Make sense? Awesome. So let's do a quick test, all right? So I'm gonna click on save. Topic is saved. On the testing, I'll actually go and turn on the tracking so we can actually see which topics it bounces around. And then the first thing I'm gonna go and say is hi there. So when I say hi there, it actually goes and directly goes into the greeting topic, which is great. Now I'll go and put this question in. I'll say, I'd like some details on a specific Lego part number. Let's see how it reacts. So when I click on the enter, it's pretty awesome. Not only did it go to our topic, it automatically recognized what the trigger was and jumped straight to the question. I really like these improvements that are coming into this Copilot Studio. I gladly accept those. All right, so it's wanting a Lego part number. And it's important to note that this Copilot Studio is for a very specific set of people who actually know all this stuff. What is a Lego part number? What is a Lego set number? Could be similar. Because say for example, you build something for a pharmaceutical company, over there, they know what those pharmaceutical drug names are. So it's important that you know who the audience is over here. In my case, I know what Lego part number it is. It is I'm gonna put that as 32525, hit enter. Now it is actually going in and using this plugin action. It's telling us it is searching for this information. And voila, it actually goes ahead and not only brings the information back, but it presents it so well. It's telling me the details of the part with the part number 302525 are as follows and it's giving me bullet points. Like this is pretty good text over here. But what I wanna do is instead of getting this part image URL, I wanna present the image. And we can do that very easily. So on the bottom, I'm gonna click on the add no, and what you wanna use is send a message. Click on that, and instead of putting any text over here, click on the plus add right there, and it's got the image. So on the right side, on the image properties, you can actually ignore the title. For the image URL, click on it, and pick in these variables that were created from the node about the one that we created for the plugin action. So scroll down a little bit and make sure you get the correct URL because there's a part URL, but what we want is the part image URL. So I'm gonna select that one. I'll go ahead and save it. We'll make sure that the topic gets saved. Let's wait. There you go, the topic is saved. I'll go ahead and clear this one and let's start all over again. I'm gonna say, hi there. I'll go ahead and put in the same question. I'd like some details of a specific Lego part number. Awesome, it came directly over here. I'm gonna put in the exact same part number too. It's 30, 25, 25. It is searching for the Lego information for that part number, pulls the information that we saw, and now it also goes and pulls this image. 
So this was the Lego part number. Let's go and also build one for the Lego set number. And for that, I'm gonna go out again into the topics, click on the plus create on the topic. Let's go and use Copilot again. The name of the topic, this is going to be get Lego set number. And in the create a topic two section, I'll go ahead and put in, let user get information about Lego using set number. Click on create, it is going ahead and building us our topic, took us directly into the studio section, made sure that the topic name was correct. And you know what, I'm seeing this very similar to what we just did for the part number. The triggers also are pretty good. If I go and click on the edit, it has get Lego set number or find Lego set number. Pretty spot on, I was pretty impressed about this part. Um, you know what I did for the variable in the part number? I'm gonna do the exact same over here. I'll click on it, and even though it gave me the set number, I'm gonna go and put a prefix of var so I know what it is. Um, and then after the message, let's go and now put in our plugin action. So I'm gonna go and say call an action. It's gonna be a plugin, and this one is going to be of get set details. When I click on it, it automatically went and added my plugin action. It's got the inputs and the outputs. These outputs also are pretty awesome. So let's go and finish with the inputs. I'm gonna say for the set value, it is the set number and the actual information comes from the var set number. Also, since we've done this before, let's go and add that image as well. So I'll go and click on the plus. It's going to be send a message and send a message, go down to plus add, again plus add, and it's the image. And on the top right in the properties, the image URL is right over here. It is the set image URL. Click on it, let's go and save it. The topic is saved. I'll just go ahead and do a reset over here in this test conversation we're having. So it's nicely cleared up. I'll go and say, hi there. All right, went to the greetings topic. We expected that. This time I'll go and put in this text. I'll say, I'd like some details of a specific Lego set number. I'm gonna go and hit on enter. And now it automatically jumped in directly to this topic. So it knows the difference between which is a part one and which is a set one. And that's thanks to these triggers that we put in. The triggers are spot on. And as you remember, even for the triggers, Copilot helped us. So I'm pretty happy overall so far. All right, so I'm, the message though, again, I need to give a very specific one for the set. And like I said before, this Copilot is going to be used by a specific audience who knows this stuff. So I know that the set number I'm looking for is 75292-1. If I go and hit on that, click enter, it is going and saying, the, the, it's going and telling me that you entered this specific spot number and voila, it was able to go and pull the information using our rebrick, using the rebrickable connector, gets the part information and there you go. That is the Razor Crest ship Lego information that we got. I don't know about you, but I am geeking out over here because the whole process has gotten so much more easier using the plugin action and even leveraging Copilot. So this is why I said in the introduction that if you're coming in from the Power Virtual Agent side, then you might have to start rethinking some of the ways you did things. Because in the past, if I had to do this, use that rebrickable API connector, I would have to leverage Power Automate. But now in Copilot Studio, with all of these plugin actions available, you can directly use that in your Copilot Studio. And we were able to build the plugin actions using two different actions. One was for the parts and the other one was for the sets, all inside the Copilot Studio. Not even once did we use Power Automate. And if you're coming in fresh inside Copilot Studio and never leverage Power Virtual Agents, you are in for a treat because the whole process has gotten so much more easier. So hopefully this video was useful to you. And as always, keep using Copilot Studio. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go ahead and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.